Welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is discuss an extremely important topic in biochemistry. Um, that topic is methylation. Methylation is of paramount importance in biochemistry and really to get a broad, uh, very, very um, actually detailed look at the cell, we have to understand methylation. There are many processes that use s methionine in order to methylate. Um, for instance, your DNA is constantly being methylated. Um, in order to degrade catecholamines, one of the processes is catalyzed by catechol-O-methyl transferase, and that's going to methylate the catecholamine in order to inactivate it. There's also another enzyme called phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase, and that's an enzyme that methylates norepinephrine to make epinephrine. So there are a lot of examples, really important examples, of methylation reactions that occur in the cell. And in general, for the most part, the methyl group donor is going to be this molecule right here. It's S-adenosyl methionine. And oftentimes what we usually abbreviate it as is SAM, or another abbreviation that's also common is ADOMET. Okay. Ordinarily, I just write SAM because it's a lot easier than writing out ADOMET, and it's certainly a lot easier than writing out S-adenosyl methionine. Now, before we really... Um, go into the cycle itself, let's analyze SAM. Okay, So number one, we have this adenosine group right here. This is our adenosine, right? It's our, it's our nucleoside, right? And then notice we have an amino acid, right? This component right here, this is what amino acid? Well, it's methionine, right? You have your two methylene groups and then a methyl thiol. Right? So this is methionine essentially in a covalent bond with adenosine through the 5' prime part of adenosine and through the S or the sulfur of methionine. Now notice what happens, and you, can't re you might not be able to see it too well, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. This sulfur, notice, has a positive charge on it. Okay, sulfur, even though it can handle a positive charge better than oxygen, it still doesn't really like to have a positive charge. So the methyl group um, that's situated below the sulfur in this picture becomes a really hot electrophile. And so nucleophiles like to attack it. And so we'll look at the mechanism of a methyl transferase um, in a little bit. But suffice it to say that when a nucleophile attacks that methyl group, it forces the rest of that molecule to be a good leaving group. And it is a good leaving group. So at this point, um, let's start with s methionine. Even though it's technically, even though the next step is technically step two, we're going to start with that step. Let's start with s methionine and kind of see how it works. Okay, so what I have down here is a reaction that you would normally see in biochemistry too. This is going to be the reaction of guanidino acetate and methyltransferase. So the molecule on the left is the precursor to creatine. In fact, the molecule on the right is creatine. So the mo molecule on the left is guanidino acetate. And this is going to be the reaction of guanidino acetate and methyltransferase. Methyltransferases are often um, pretty easy to identify because they'll often either be labeled as N-methyltransferase, which means that the methyl group will be transferred to a nitrogen, or O-methyltransferase, in which it's transferred to an oxygen. There are a few reactions here and there where they're C-methyltransferases, but the overwhelming majority are going to be N and O-methyltransferases. So, for instance, you would know that we're going to transfer a methyl group to the nitrogen because this is guanidino acetate N-methyltransferase. Okay, so the very first step of a mechanism like this is ordinarily deprotonation. So there's going to be a base in the active site that's going to deprotonate, in this case, the nitrogen because it's an N-methyltransferase. Now, in this particular reaction, I'm showing you the concerted process just so you can get an overall view of the reaction. There's actually two proposed mechanisms for guanidino acetate and methyltransferase. Those are the concerted processes and the stepwise. I'm showing you the concerted process because it's a little bit easier conceptually. Okay, so the base is going to deprotonate the proton from the nitrogen, and that's going to force these electrons to come out and, and attack this methyl group. Okay, 
So they attack this methyl group. And remember that that methyl group is a really hot electrophile. Why is it a hot electrophile? Because the sulfur atom it's attached to has a positive charge. It doesn't particularly like to be like that. Now, if you attack that methyl group, you have to have a leaving group, right? This is just a simple bimolecular substitution reaction. That's also something that's important. This is an SN2, um, one of the few SN2s we'll actually see in biochemistry. So when that, those electrons attack that methyl group, there has to be a leaving group. And the leaving group, I'll do this electrons in light blue, the leaving group is essentially the whole rest of this molecule. And actually, one thing I should go ahead and do, I didn't even notice this. Let me go ahead and erase this. Let me go ahead and erase that. This molecule that's right here, this one is often abbreviated SA, oops, is often abbreviated SAH. And because this molecule is S-adenosyl homocysteine, Okay, so whenever S adenosyl methionine or SAM, whenever SAM transfers a methyl group, the leaving group or the product is always S adenosyl homocysteine. And so in this particular reaction, we took guanidino acetate, transferred a nitrogen, or excuse me, a methyl group to the nitrogen, and generated creatine. Creatine. And so the product of this reaction apart from creatine is going to be S adenosyl homocysteine. So when you come back up here and look at the SAM cycle, uh, which is what the cycle is called, notice that they say a variety of methyl transferases because there are a whole bunch of them. There's O methyl transferases, N methyl transferases, C methyl transferases. Um, and so the product is just going to be methylated. But the leaving group of the actual SN2 reaction is going to be S adenosyl where's my mouse, is going to be, oh, mouse is up there, is going to be S adenosyl homocysteine. I'm having trouble seeing my mouse because of the white screen. Anyways, okay, so that's going to be um, the product is S adenosyl homocysteine. However, we have to regenerate S adenosyl methionine somehow, and it turns out that S adenosyl homocysteine is pretty worthless. So what we're going to do is use an enzyme called S adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase. And essentially what S adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase is going to do is it's simply going to do an SN2 reaction. It's going to do an SN2 reaction, and it's going to cleave off homocysteine. And if you notice, homocysteine is basically cysteine, but with an extra methylene group in the middle. So if I'm labeling it, here's the extra methylene group in the middle, and that's what homocysteine is. It's it's just a, an alternate version of cysteine, and it's the product of s adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase. So in other words, what um, what this enzyme is going to do, it's simply going to do an SN2 reaction on adenosine and kick off homocysteine as the leaving group. Okay. Now what we're about to see is we're about to actually see another biosynthesis. We're about to actually see one of the ways we synthesize methionine. And the enzyme that does this is called methionine synthase. Now this particular enzyme requires um, two coenzymes. One of them is vitamin B12, also called cobalamin. And the other one is N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And the reason it's called N5-methyl is because this particular methyl group right here is attached to nitrogen number five on tetrahydrofolate. So you call it N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And if you're actually looking at the biosynthesis of tetrahydrofolates, which I recommend you go back and do, we have a video on that. This is synthesized directly from N5-N10-methylene. Oops, let me come down here and do that. N5-N10-methylene. N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate and that gets converted irreversibly to N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate by the action of N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase which happens to be an NADPH dependent reductase. Now you would think that the methyl transfer would be just a simple SN2 um, between homocysteine and N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, but the mechanism is a lot more convoluted than that. It's really complicated. The actual um, methyl group is going to be transferred first to vitamin B12, synthesizing methylcobalamin, and then methylcobalamin will then transfer the methyl group to methionine or excuse me, to homocysteine making methionine, okay? So there's actually an intermediate that it goes through in which vitamin B12 has the methyl group. And then 
homocysteine picks up the methyl group to become methionine. Okay, so now that we have methionine, now all we need to do is transfer the adenosine group onto it. And this is accomplished by the action of methionine adenosyl transferase. And notice that in the process of this enzyme, not only do we kick off phosphate, but we also kick off pyrophosphate. And one of the good things about this reaction is that the pyrophosphate, the inorganic pyrophosphate, can be consumed by inorganic pyrophosphatase, a hydrolytic enzyme that cleaves inorganic pyrophosphate into two inorganic phosphates. And that release of free energy, that exergonic reaction, is used to drive work inside the cell. And one of the really sort of bizarre things about this particular pathway that you don't see anywhere else is, for the most part, Every single reaction in here is, with the exception of inorganic pyrophosphatase, for the most part, all the reactions in some way contain an SN2. Notice that the methyl transferase reaction that we just looked at, that's an SN2, right? We looked at guanidino acetate and methyl transferase. The base deprotonated the nitrogen, and those electrons attacked the methyl group. Loss of a leaving group was s homocysteine. So that was an SN2, right? Also... The s homocysteine hydrolase is also an SN2 with homocysteine as the leaving group. Okay, So a lot of the enzymes in here, including methionine adenosyl transferase, are simple bimolecular substitutions. That is a very, very unusual thing. Most pathways don't even contain an SN2. So very, very unusual. So let's do a quick recap of this cycle. This is, remember, again, the SAM cycle, or also called the S-adenosyl methionine cycle. And we start with S-adenosyl methionine, and S-adenosyl methionine will transfer its methyl group to various substrates, and they're going to be enzymatic reactions. We looked at guanidinoacetate and methyl transferase, but certainly, say we were looking at the biosynthesis of epinephrine, we could have been looking at phenylethanolamine and methyl transferase. Or if we're looking at the degradation of dopamine, we could have looked at um, catechol-O-methyl transferase. So the naming of, of methyl transferase sort of gives away that it uses SAM. Okay, that, that gives us a leaving group of s adenosyl homocysteine. Then s adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase is going to do an SN2 and hydrolyze off homocysteine regenerating adenosine. Okay, and then the homocysteine is going to get consumed by methionine synthase. And so N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is synthesized from N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate by the action of N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, is going to transfer its methyl group first to vitamin B12, generating what's known as methylcobalamin. And then methylcobalamin is going to transfer its methyl group to homocysteine generating methionine. Then uh, the methionine is going to get an adenosine group added to its sulfur by the action of methionine adenosyl transferase. Now notice that per cycle, this is going to consume one ATP, right? And you're going to be constantly doing methyl transferring, right? Your DNA, every time you replicate your DNA, there's many, many, many methyl transferase reactions that occur. Biosynthesis largely requires methyl transferring. Okay, and as we already saw, the synthesis of creatine, the synthesis of epinephrine, the degradation of all catecholamines requires this. And there's countless other examples of enzymes that use s methionine. So this tells you that it is so important that the cell is willing to waste one ATP per cycle of the SAM cycle. That's how important this is. It's willing to waste that much energy. So it's an energy it's an energetically expensive process, but absolutely vital to the cell. So I hope this gave you a little bit of intuition on the S methionine cycle. See you in the next video.